Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, the flood. One of the strangest historical coincidences that can be found all across the world is the myth of a great flood. In North America, most are familiar with the biblical flood story. God flooded the earth to get rid of the giant Nephilim, and Noah saved all the animals in his boat. But the truth is that there have been flood myths for over 4,000 years. And weirdly enough, they are all shockingly similar. The Babylonians had a flood story going back to the 17th century BC, in which a race of giants rebelled against the gods and had to be wiped off the face of the earth by a great flood. The creator of humans, the god Enki, warned a man named Utnapishtim of the incoming flood so that he could build an ark and save his family. This story was told an estimated 2,000 years before Noah's story became popular. But there's more. In Inca mythology, 500 years ago, they had their own flood myth. The creator god and supreme being, Kontiki, created a race of giants at the dawn of civilization. But the giants became too much to handle. They were irritating and didn't obey orders, and they were always causing trouble. So Kontiki turned the giants into stone and sent a mighty flood to wash them away. After the flood, he created humans, and they turned out to be much more agreeable with the rules. What we see is the same story rinsed and repeated throughout the eons. But the most shocking part is definitely the Inca making up the same story as the Babylonians. The two civilizations never had any contact. For some strange and mysterious reason, ancient civilizations across the globe believed giants ruled the earth and were annihilated by a flood. It makes you think there must have been at least some truth to the myth. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. The King Tut Mystery A century after legendary British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, the ancient pharaoh is still a mystery. Questions still blight King Tut's life, his death, and his tomb. We know the boy king was born around 1305 BC. He ruled Egypt for just shy of 10 years before his death. When his tomb was found in 1922, it contained riches the likes of which no explorer had ever seen before. It was like wandering into Aladdin's Cave of Wonders and finding a magic carpet. Except instead of a magic carpet, archaeologists found Tutankhamun still at rest inside his marvelous sarcophagus. Researchers believe the reason his tomb remained sealed for so long had to do with his father, Pharaoh Akhenaten. He was such a hated pharaoh that after he died and his son left the throne prematurely, the rulers that came after tried to wipe their family lineage from history. This resulted in the tomb being lost, quite literally, underneath the sands of the Egyptian desert for over 3,300 years. A lot of advances have been made in understanding the young pharaoh's life, but we still don't know how he died. CT scans, X-ray scans, and DNA testing have shown that the king suffered from a lot of different issues. He had malaria at his time of death, he had a cleft palate, likely from years of inbreeding, and he had a broken leg. But scientists have never been able to determine exactly what killed him. And now for number 8. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Jorge Gonzalez Larramendi for all the super thanks. We really appreciate the support. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family for more mysterious discoveries. Number 8. The Nazca Lines in 1926, one of the greatest discoveries in history was made 250 miles south of Lima in Peru. Near the shores of the Pacific Ocean, stretched across a great desert plain, there is a mystery thousands of years in the making. The Nazca Lines cover about 170 square miles of flat, empty earth. The soil here is broken up by incredibly complex pictures drawn by hand thousands of years ago. The geoglyphs include pictures of animals, complicated abstract patterns, images of strange beings that almost look like space aliens, and even fingerprints from giants. They don't appear to follow any kind of pattern. They are drawn with the same kind of randomness as a kid with a crayon and a blank sheet of paper. Modern people first saw the lines just shy of 100 years ago after airplanes were invented. The geoglyphs are truly enormous, some over 30 miles long. It's impossible to understand what they are from the ground. Even travelers who came across the lines in the 1500s thought they were just the remnants of roads. It wasn't until pilots started flying over the area that they realized the lines made up massive pictures. 
from above, it looks like a giant drew pictures of all their favorite animals in the sand with their fingertip. The people who made these geoglyphs were the Nazca culture. They lived throughout the region starting around 100 BC and flourished up until 800 AD. Their geoglyphs were carved into the dirt at random times during their reign. They also practiced mummification and cranial modification. We know who they were and how they made the geoglyphs, but the biggest enduring mystery is that nobody knows why. Do you have any theories? Let me know in the comments! Number 7. The Mystery of the Keepers The mystery of the Elin Moore Lighthouse Keepers is a recent one, but still worth knowing about. The mystery began in January of 1900. Three lighthouse keepers named Thomas Marshall, James Duquette, and Donald MacArthur vanished on the island of Elin Moore off the coast of Scotland. The lighthouse keepers had gone to the island to maintain the lighthouse, but when the replacement crew arrived, all three men were gone. They were nowhere to be found, but the lighthouse itself in perfectly fine shape. There was no sign of a struggle, no sign of any violence, and no sign of the keepers. The only oddity was that two of their jackets were gone, suggesting they had gone outside and then never came back. But it also suggests one of the keepers went outside in a heavy storm without any rain gear on. At the end of the investigation, officials ruled it an accident. The official story was that the two men in rain jackets were wiped away by waves, and the third man was washed off the island when he tried to save them. However, there was never any proof that this happened, and there has been speculation ever since. Nobody knows what truly went down with the lighthouse keepers, but one of the most popular theories is that they were abducted by extraterrestrials. What do you think happened? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to hit subscribe while you're at it! Number 6. The Han Pigment Han purple is a pigment used 2,000 years ago in China to eliminate the third dimension. That sounds a little strange, so let's break it down so that it makes more sense. Han purple was used to decorate pottery. It was used to color the terracotta warriors, and it was a favorite pigment for lots of ancient artists. But then, people suddenly stopped using it around the year 220 AD. The recipe for the pigment was lost until 1992, when Elizabeth Fitzhugh from the Smithsonian found it. She identified the chemical composition, which allowed scientists to recreate the pigment for the first time in 1700 years. The Han pigment was a very purple color of dye made from barium copper silicate. How in the world anyone figured out how to create this pigment so long ago is anybody's guess. Many researchers believe it may have been an accidental discovery during the process of glass making. To create this purple pigment, all the elements need to be melted together at temperatures upwards of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. And then there's the whole thing about the third dimension. Scientists have found that when the purple pigment drops to extremely cold temperatures, its magnetic waves cease to exist in the third dimension. This happens if there's extremely high magnetism and the temperature has dropped near absolute zero. When these conditions are met, the pigment enters a state of matter rarely observed, essentially vanishing from our three-dimensional world. It's such a strange thing to comprehend that it would probably give Albert Einstein a headache. Number 5. The Megaliths of Oceania The incredible megaliths of Oceania are a huge mystery. They are some of the most interesting monuments on the planet, and yet some of the least studied. The Moai sculptures of Easter Island are certainly intriguing, but there are so many more statues across Polynesia that nobody even knows about. There are the statues on Hiva Oa, the ancient fortress in New Zealand, the jungle pyramid on Rapa Iti, and the destroyed temple of Tapu Tapu Atea Maure on Leeward Islands. And let's not forget the Ha Amonga a Maui in Tonga, or the ruins scattered across the Hawaiian Islands. Most of these megalithic ruins were built hundreds or even thousands of years ago, and those who built them are long gone. In New Zealand during the 15th century, it was the Maori who built Maunga Kia Kia Fortress in Auckland. This was the largest structure they ever put together. For years after, the Maori told stories of how their ancestors all came from the same hill before the fortress was built, and how the spirits of their elders still resided in the place. 
Moving out from New Zealand, Polynesia is riddled with mysterious megaliths, strange stone complexes, and ruins so impressive they couldn't possibly have been built by mere mortals. Easter Island is only one piece of a much larger and stranger story. Number 4. The Tel Dan Inscription the Tel Dan inscription was the first physical evidence found of the biblical King David being a real person. The inscription was discovered on a broken chunk of stone known as a stela in 1993 in northern Israel. Archaeologist Abraham Biran was the man behind the discovery. The inscription on the stone commemorates the victory of an Aramean king over the king of the house of David. The text specifically mentions King David's Israelite horsemen being vanquished by the Aramean king with divine guidance from Hadad, an ancient god. The most important thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't technically mention any of the players by name. However, the dating of the inscription and its details have given scholars clues. It's generally agreed the stela is detailing the campaign of Hazael of Damascus, who defeated Jehoram of Israel and Aziah of Judah. What was so unprecedented about the discovery was its mention of the House of David, implying the historic reality of King David, one of the most important kings in the Bible. However, we still don't know if King David, in historical sense, was indeed the founder of the Israelite kingdom, like it says in the Bible, or simply the ruler of a tribal chiefdom. Number 3. The Fuente Magna Near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, one of the most sacred bodies of water in the world, a bowl was found in 1958. It's not exactly a bowl like you might eat your cereal out of, but more of a large stone vessel. It's called the Fuente Magna, and it was decorated in engravings of strange anthropomorphic figures. Whoever decorated the vessel included images of zoological characters that almost looked like human-slash-animal hybrids. Even more mysterious than the anthropomorphic characters is the presence of two different types of script. The first one is a local language spoken by the Pukara people about 1,000 years ago. The second script appears to be an ancient version of Proto-Sumerian, spoken in Mesopotamia over 5,000 years ago. As you can imagine, the stone vessel presents a bit of a problem for historians. How in the world could a bowl have engravings from a language from Sumerian and a language from Bolivia separated by an entire ocean and 4,000 years at the same time? One of the theories is that a group of pilgrims from ancient Sumer somehow made it across the entire planet, hiked across the mountains and deserts of South America, and created a new society at Lake Titicaca. The issue is that we don't have any evidence other than the Fuente Magna. Expert Bernardo Biados says this is likely because the vessel was crafted by Sumerians who settled in Bolivia around 2500 BC. Then their culture gradually changed and they stopped carving things from their homeland, becoming a totally different civilization. What do you think? Did the Sumerians make it to Bolivia? Let me know in the comments! Number 2. The Walls of Sacsayhuaman on the outskirts of the Peruvian city of Cusco is the megalithic complex of Sacsayhuaman. The city, occupied as early as 900 AD, is famous for its incredible stonework. The huge stone walls here were built with an unimaginable level of precision. Some of the stones making up the walls weigh over 200 tons, meaning they are some of the largest building blocks in ancient America. But all the stones have one thing in common. No matter how big or how small, they all fit together like puzzle pieces. These stone blocks fit so tightly together, you can't even put a piece of paper between many of them. Some of these stones even have rounded corners, as if they were cut with laser beams. For years, scientists have been stumped trying to figure out how the ancient people here created such strong walls. The interlocking stones are unlike anything found elsewhere in South America, or the rest of the ancient world for that matter. These weren't bricks stacked up uniformly, but giant boulders carved precisely to fit with other random giant boulders. Some say the builders used a special liquid that melted the rocks so that they fit together. This liquid would have been derived from natural plants found in Peru. Others, like retired architect John McCauley, say it was nothing special at all. John says it was a clever building technique utilized by engineers of the time. Still, that doesn't explain how the ancient inhabitants of this long-lost city managed to move boulders so heavy they would have needed the strength of a thousand men. 
Number 1. Burial Mounds in the Dutch Countryside Over the past few years, roughly 6,000 amateur archaeologists working with a heritage organization in the Netherlands have been scouring the hills and valleys for treasure. These amateur researchers have been hunting for archaeological anomalies and historical secrets. The efforts of the citizens to find out more about their homeland's ancient past has been a huge success. They have identified roughly 1,000 prehistoric burial mounds in the Dutch countryside. It seems the burials are everywhere across the rural landscape, painting a picture of a lost world. Seeing as we're dealing with 1,000 burial mounds, there are a lot of variables at play. Each mound is different in size and age. Some were used over 3,200 years ago in the Bronze Age, others as recently as 600 BC in the Iron Age. Researchers say the burials would have been accompanied by sacred rituals. The burial mounds are evidence of a rich society that dominated the Netherlands in prehistoric times. Researchers even found about 15 square miles of agricultural fields used by some of the earliest farmers in Europe. We don't have a name for these people yet. Researchers still have to excavate all 1,000 burials, but the mystery is real and there should be a lot more information coming out soon. Scientists have to uncover the details of a civilization they barely knew existed, so stay tuned! Thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time! Bye!